Thank you, Zimbabwe, for tuning into yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030. We are talking of becoming an upper middle class economy by year 2030, and one way which is inclusive for all is agriculture. We are seeing well over 70% of our population in this country makes a living out of agricultural activities and ventures. Now, if you look at SDG number 12 on the United Nations Agenda Vision 2030, it talks of sustainable production and responsible consumption. Today we are going to be talking of increasing production and productivity in sweet potato production. To discuss this and more, I am going to be joined by Dr. Rukuni. He is here at Kutsaga Tobacco Research Board and is going to be taking us through the nitty gritties of producing sweet potato here in Zimbabwe. Stay tuned. Dr. Rukuni, thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you, Azanai. Yes, as I violated earlier, we want to talk of seed potato production. Can we talk about the importance of increasing production when it comes to seed potato production in Zimbabwe as we pave way towards achieving vision 2030 as a country? Okay. Um, the continuous uh, supply of seed potato is very important to the agricultural sector. And um, the government has actually placed uh, potato as one of the most, uh, as one of the important crops uh, of our most important uh, staple foods. And so, most of our seed is being imported from South Africa, and what we need to do now is to substitute that source of seed, because before, we used to be able to produce our own seed. Okay. Uh, talking of that, can you also highlight and include the objectives of producing seed potato in increased quantities as a country? Okay. The objective of uh, producing uh, an increased uh, supply of seed potato is to make sure that we substitute all uh, seed potato imports and we also substitute all whey potato imports whereby we are, we are importing uh, processing potato uh, for our uh, shipping industry and also what we need to do ultimately is to export the seed and also the whey potato. Thank you so much, Dr. Rukuni. You would find that in our farming community as in we interact with farmers, generally there might be a mis mix up of terms or a misconception whereby seed potato and potato in general are regarded as the same thing. We have table potato for consumption and seed potato that is used for cultivation and production. Can you maybe demystify that concept and those terms for our audience there at home? Okay, what is generally required is uh, um, referred to as seed potato is uh, the conventional tubers, okay. uh, true potato seed, and increasingly now in Zimbabwe is the mini tubers. Okay. So if you are going to be using table potatoes for your seed, what you are basically doing is multiplying disease in your field. Right from nematodes, uh, the viral diseases that will be loaded in your tubers, and uh, some insects like uh, the tuber moth that are normally not detected by an ordinary person but can be de detected by qualified people. Um, in a nutshell, if you are using a uh, seed potato, you are certified seed potato, you will be much safer and you get more better yields and um, you have low disease pressure in your field. If you use table potato as a source of seed, you are basically multiplying disease. Okay, Dr. Rukuni, is there a difference by just observing the potatoes? Can you tell that this is seed potato, this is table potato? Because as we move around across the geographical spheres of our country, you would find that some farmers end up just when they purchase potato for consumption, you will see them with the same potato going to the field to plant that same potato. Is there a difference through observation by looking at the potato, the tuber? Can you tell that this is seed and this is table? Yeah, when in the worst case scenarios, you can easily tell that this is uh, not seed potato. For example, if it's infested with um, with a uh, tuber moth, okay. and also if it's infested with uh, nematodes. But basically, if those are physical symptoms are not available, you will not be able to tell if it's certified seed or not. Okay. But for you to be able to buy certified seed, you should be able to see it on the label of the pegs that this is certified seed. Uh, the generation. Uh, that it belongs to and there is also um, a certificate to that. Okay. Generally, Dr. Rukun, you'd find that in Zimbabwe or across the world, farmers become vulnerable to activities of rent seekers, Makoro Nyera. Some of them just produce their own seed and say this is seed potato. But I want us to talk about the importance 
of a farmer to a farmer to our farming community of getting or obtaining their seed potato from reputable organizations in a nutshell what are the advantages of a farmer coming to get their seed from a certified producer the advantages of getting your seed from your certified uh, producer uh, who is certified by the government is that you get a seed of genetic purity um, you know your variety is right uh, if you go and buy seed elsewhere that is used as seed potato, that is used as table potato, you won't be able to tell which variety it is. And in most cases, they will be able, you have a variety of admixtures. Okay. So in the end, you cannot really tell the performance of your crop and it doesn't respond very well to good agronomic practices. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rukuni, you would find that uh, there are differences when producing table potato for consumption and seed potato. Now, the anchor of this episode today is production of seed potato. Can you take us through the various stages or the basic requirements of producing seed potato? Okay. Um, you, the first thing is you, you have to be a registered seed house. And then if you are registered with the government, you have to register which varieties you produce. Uh, for us, we produce diamond and emmys. Okay. And uh, those are registered with the government. And then for our processes, we start with uh, what we call meristem tissue culture in the lab. And uh, from meristem tissue culture, we get to, to the multiplication of the, of the plantlets. And in this lab, uh, you can see there is a, there is a jars, uh, okay. yes, with uh, at, on artificial media, that is agar. That's where we multiply our plantlets okay. before we go into the greenhouse to give you to produce the mini tubers. That are the foundation of the mini of the seed potato program at Vitsaga. Okay. Is it possible for a farmer out there to want to venture into seed potato production? And what are the basic prerequisites? Because we are talking of you as an institution having a laboratory whereby you do things in uh, various stages procedurally. Now we are talking of a farmer maybe in Karoi or in Inyanga who wants to get into seed potato production. Is it feasible for a farmer to get into seed potato production? Yes, any farmer uh, can get into seed production. Uh, firstly, if they have to get uh, into seed production with us, they have to come and uh, register and we go to their farm uh, to inspect the facilities right from tillage equipment, uh, uh, seed potato storage facilities, their irrigation, uh, and also we want to know whether they have grown potatoes or not so that we can judge the guidance that they need from us. Um, anybody who qualifies can be given our seed and what we do is we have uh, internal inspectors that are government gazetted that go from the fields uh, to the fields to actually look at look at the crops all the time to see if there are any problems and at each stage we get we invite the government seed inspector twice before we harvest the crop and uh, at least once after harvesting the chupa so that they can inspect whether it does qualify to be called seed potato we have come to the end of this first segment, but I would have done an injustice to the episode. Our viewers there at home are looking today, it's a very different episode, uh, where we are standing in a laboratory. In a nutshell, just in brief, can you maybe just highlight what is happening in this laboratory? Uh, in this laboratory, basically what is happening is uh, the multiplication of plantlets, and uh, these are the plantlets that will be taken into the greenhouse okay. for mini chuba production. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Rukuni. There you had it, viewers. We are talking of seed potato production right here in Zimbabwe as we uh, pay for it towards achieving vision 2030 as a country. On that note, we are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned. Welcome back viewers, we are in the second segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions in support of Vision 2030. This is where the farming community converges and the various stakeholders in the agriculture industry. Now viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. 
feel free to get in touch with me. The producer was Anaya Manure. It's on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also available on YouTube. Leave your comments and suggestions. They are most imperative and most welcome to us on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. And right now we are standing in a greenhouse. We are talking of seed potato production right here in Zimbabwe ahead of Vision 2030 where we are talking of not leaving anyone behind. Welcome back Dr. Rukuni. We are in the second segment of your program. Thank you Wazanai. We are standing in a greenhouse. Can you maybe take us through the various activities that are taking place? The nature of the crop that is in here? How old is it? Maybe the type of irrigation that you are using to sustain this crop? Okay. Thank you uh, and welcome back. Uh, what we are looking at here is what we saw in the lab, in the growth room, where we have uh, plantlets growing on uh, agar. Uh, this agar has got all the nutrients that are required for raising these uh, plantlets. So from this jar, we'll take the plantlets and plant them in our grow mix, okay. which is a soilless media. Uh, looking at these uh, plantlets, these are about a month old, okay. and we will keep them here for at least two months before we harvest and uh, get these mini tubers. Okay. These mini tubers are supposed to be clean and they are because they have already been tested. And from these mini tubers, this is what we call G0, which is generation zero. And from generation zero, we take these to the growers for field multiplication. Okay. So for field multiplication, what we normally do is um, we select a few growers, normally we give them a hectare uh, plus minus so that they can actually concentrate on producing this very uh, important foundation for this program. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rukuni. As a country, why is it important for us to produce our own seed potato instead of importing? There are various uh, imp uh, reasons why it is very important. Uh, the foremost uh, important reason is that we would like to save our foreign currency so that we can import other things th other than what we can produce locally, for example, fuel, fuel. So we want to increase our seed potato production to stop imports into the country. And then the other thing is we want to also preserve the, the industry, tobacco, potato, tomato, uh, paprika, and various other solenaceous crops are in the same family as potatoes. And uh, importation of potatoes, uh, of seed potato, is actually uh, a possible route for the importation of disease. And if we import uh, disease in the form of um, viruses, uh, potato virus Y and other things, that also affect tobacco, which we know very well that is very crucial for the performance of the economy, we will actually, we have done ourselves a disservice. So it is very important that um, we keep uh, seed potato uh, production locally and then the other thing is if we import seed from other countries, we are actually exporting jobs. Yes. And if we do export jobs, uh, our people remain unemployed. So we want to, to increase uh, farm activities. And this project and uh, this uh, crop is actually a very high potential of, ge of uh, generating jobs from the fields uh, where the seed is produced to the commercial crops. Uh, where the raw material for the shipping industry is produced. Okay, Dr. Rukuni, just out of interest, through your various interactions with farmers who are looking to get into seed potato production, how has been the atmosphere, the environment, in terms of these farmers embracing these new technologies that you as an organization are advancing to them? Uh, what I would say was uh, one of the most important uh, uh, or the big hurdles was the introduction of this mini tuber. Okay. Yeah. A lot of our growers, even some who had produced seed before, they have never used such a small uh, tuber for okay. seed potato production and they did not trust that it would give them the yield. But uh, we assured them and we have proved to them that this is actually just as good as the table, as uh, the bigger potatoes normally grown in Nyanga for seed potato. Yes. Moving right along as we round off this segment, Dr. Rukuni, uh, the government in 2005 declared the potato industry as a strategic industry. A look into the future. Five years from now, we are talking of becoming an upper middle class economy by year 2030. Any projections? What can we expect? What do we need to do to get there? Okay. 
Uh, first of all, what I would say, the seed potato production is very important and is very profitable. Um, we have actually recruited a lot of outgrowers um, and our program, uh, the objective is to get eight shubas. From each one of these, okay. a grower should give us eight, eight shubas, shubas, which means when we give them a hectare, we should get eight hectares out of the out of that uh, planting okay. and what has happened in some cases some farmers have failed and when you fail normally you blame the others not yourself <laughs> and a lot of the time they don't get the eight shubas that we want and then they start saying it's not profitable but for some of our growers we've actually attained the eight figure and above they are very happy and we are still recruiting new growers who wish to who wish to plant, uh, to grow seed potato with us so that they can join the successful group of farmers that, are, that we have. And of course, if you do not meet the target, we will actually simply drop off the program because we are getting less returns from what we have invested. Okay, yes. It is very important uh, in farming as a business that you get the return per dollar invested. That is where the gist of agribusiness is. Now, Dr. Rukuni, just out of interest, what could be the reason that most of uh, the farmers that you might be interacting with or being in partnerships with failing to attain those age tubers? I would say generally it's poor management. Okay. Um, the tillage practices are not right. Uh, the irrigation is not right. Uh, fertilizer application may not be right also and uh, generally the sprays uh, seed, uh, seed potato requires lots of sprays okay. to keep off uh, the insects uh, uh, like um, the chuba moth and we also the diseases uh, like uh, the late blight as you might know in 1845 to eight, uh, 1849 there was the Irish famine mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. caused by late blight and this led to the uh, like the death of a near nearly a uh, million Irish people and uh, the emigration of another million and with the uh, resulting in a population drop of 20 to 25 percent. So it is very important that for farmers to succeed they have to do things right. At least when the Irish famine happened they might not have understood the disease but now we understand the diseases that we currently have and that's why we do not want to keep importing seed potato because they will bring us new things that can actually devastate the crop in a similar way as the Irish famine. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Rukuni. There you had it, viewers. On that note, we have come to the end of this second uh, segment. We were talking of how to produce seed potato in a uh, very sustainable manner, which is also profitable to you as a farmer. A bad a carpenter will always blame his tools apart from himself. On that note, we are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. Now, Dr. Rukuni, we are here in the third and final segment of our program. Welcome back. Thank you. As I violated earlier, Dr. Rukun, when we were talking just out of interest, if you look at SDG number 17, it speaks of public-private partnerships that are going to facilitate our movement and our pace towards achieving Vision 2030 as the Zimbabwean country. We are going to be talking of how the farming community and your relationship as a state enterprise can be enhanced to increase production when it comes to sweet potato production. Okay, yes. Um... I think what we should note is that uh, we have an outgrower scheme and uh, that's uh, probably the private partners and we also have a financier. So what we have uh, done is we have arranged with them so that they can give our growers the loan to buy inputs, uh, chemicals uh, and fund the whole production process for the seed potato. What we do is to provide seed which is also paid for uh, this is a very good example of a, of a public-private partnership uh, system. We've got two uh, government entities, uh, one for funding and us for the guidance and the production of seed potato. Then we've got our farmers that produce uh, the generation one up to generation four. And we are very happy with this type of arrangement because the farmers that we deal with uh, do not necessarily struggle to get the inputs 
Uh, so there will be no excuse for our growers not to meet the targets because we, they have enough inputs uh, given to them through the financing scheme that we have. Okay. The proposed strategy, how do you intend to execute uh, these activities? We have the farming community, we have you as the regulator, we have the financing model. How do you intend to execute these activities, seed potato production, in a sustainable manner, which is feasible, which is profitable f to both you as the regulatory authority, to those who have invested, and also to the farmers. They need to repay their debts to make a living out of their agricultural ventures. The proposed strategy. Our proposed strategy for uh, this project is to make sure that uh, we have enough seed potato in the country mm -hmm. so that we can reduce or eventually eliminate the importation of seed potato. And we also like the government to enact laws as we go on that will ban or eliminate imports and that will also save our foreign currency, create jobs and uh, keep people employed. Then the next strategy is to, to produce enough web web potato okay. so that we do not have to import, import web potato because we have enough seed uh, as outlined in the first stage we now have enough seed to produce our web potato so we protect our growers by making sure they, uh, they continue in production and then after we have uh, reached I mean, we have met our demand for local web potato we should be able to ban uh, or maybe uh, uh, put up uh, enacting regulations to ban the importation of uh, whey potato. Okay. Yes. And then the last stage we are looking at ourselves is to export the seed that we produce in order to generate foreign currency. Okay. And we also need to export the whey potato that we have uh, in a similar manner to to keep people employed and also to generate foreign currency for the country. Thank you so much, Dr. Rukuni. What do we have in here? Can you maybe touch briefly on what we have in here, the uses? I can see some bags that we have. Can we talk about that? Okay. Uh, in this warehouse, we have uh, Generation 1 uh, that we produce from um, Generation 0 that we gave out to outgrowers. And then we also have seed of Generation 2, Generation 3, and the Generation 4 that we have here is seed that we actually are selling as a commercial seed. And we, we do have... Uh, uh, high demand for our seed potato, the variety diamond. Uh, we are going to have more of G4 for the other variety, which is Emis, uh, in the near future. But uh, for now, I think uh, we are in track in actually uh, being able to supply our our local uh, seed potato. Of course, it's a it's a growing industry, and. Uh, I think uh, two to three years from now, we will see the differences uh, that we can make. Okay. Dr. Rukuni, finally, we have come to the end of this week's edition. Can you maybe outline some of the recommendations that you might have mm -hmm. to our farming community, to our private sector, those that want to participate and also engage? Yes. I uh, would like uh, to assure farmers that uh, seed potato production is a, is a worthy business. Uh, like in any other system for crop production, what you need to do foremost is to meet your target. Yes. If you grow any crop without a target, you will never know how much you have performed and you should be able to monitor your performance and ultimately the the, the yields that you get. That's what gives you the profit. Okay. Now viewers, in this today's episode, we were talking of seed potato production here in Zimbabwe. We alluded to the fact of SDG number 17, which speaks of public-private partnerships. Now, viewers, if you look at it, our farming community and our country, Zimbabwe, is well endowed with the conducive environment to do agricultural activities. We are talking of the public coming in. We have our state enterprises coming in with the regulatory framework to facilitate the processes and activities in our agricultural community. We have our farmers, we are the farming community, who support this activity activities who are the producers and we also have the private sector who are coming in with the financing models they are coming in with technology new advancements in terms of seed potato production from me your host was Zanai Manure I'm also on Instagram it's a W Manure and the crew behind the scenes have yourselves a fabulous evening thank you for watching <laughs>